First of all, let me say welcome to ApacheCon. Um, if, I'm just curious, how many of you, this is your first ApacheCon? Will you raise your hand? The rest of you look around. See how many new faces that we have joining us. Um, I'm also curious how many people are not committers on any Apache project? Okay, look around at that. Um, first of all, please uh, let me welcome you uh, into being a part of our community. And this is our, um, this is where we come together and spend time in person and not on a mailing list and that's pretty exceptional at Apache because virtually everything we do ends up in a mail. Uh, one of the interesting things that we talked about over dinner last night was that we had sent uh, roughly 20 million emails in the history of the Apache Software Foundation, and we still have all of them. And uh, that's, uh, it's amazing just how much we do. So my purpose here today is to talk a little bit about the state of the ASF and to tell you uh, a bit about where it's headed in the future. Five years ago, I had the opportunity to um, give a keynote at ApacheCon Europe, and I focused completely on the external impact that the ASF had had on the world. And that's fascinating, the impact is incredible, but I wanna talk a little bit about what the ASF is doing and look more internally uh, about that today, and, and a lot of folks call this the, the state of the feather, or basically the state of the Apache Software Foundation. And I think it's important, especially since we have so many folks who have not been to an Apache Con and who are not committers, they're not part of our uh, community already, just to review a little bit about what the ASF is, why we exist, and what we're trying to accomplish. And our mission is to provide software for the public good. It's interesting, and, and Dirk was talking about that we're incorporated as a Delaware uh, corporation, and that's true. We're also specifically set up that we are a public benefit organization, meaning that we have a legal obligation to act in the best interest of the public at large, not our projects, not our sponsors, not even our individual members. Our duty is to um, focus on the public good and that puts us in an interesting place. Um, uh, the, the foundation, the operational side of the foundation doesn't really produce software. For that, we rely on individuals coming together into a community and forming a, uh, forming a, a group of people who are actually invested in producing software. And we work on supporting that, providing a framework that allows them to have resources. And we've been doing that for 20 years. And if you've been in the tech sector at all, 20 years is a lifetime. To give you some idea, the Apache group predates the existence of Google. Um, the Apache Software Foundation as a legal entity uh, is about five years older than Facebook. So these very large dominant um, organizations now uh, are roughly the same age. And that, that's stunning to me that 20 years and this particular development model and community-focused uh, open source model has lived that, that type of uh, uh, life and has had that longevity. Uh, and it's also put us in a place where we are one of the more important open source institutions around. Uh, we're certainly one of the older ones, and folks are starting to recognize uh, that there's some stability and that they can essentially trust the ASF as a steward for projects. But let me paint a little bit more of a picture because a lot of times we focus on cool projects like Kafka or Finteract, and we see really interesting technology, and we lose sight of some of the the really impressive things that the ASF has accomplished. And the first is ubiquitous adoption of open source projects that the ASF ships. So virtually every piece of technology out there has some of our code living in it somewhere. And whether that's a low level library or it's something much higher level that it interacts with, uh, it's, it is virtually, um, 
assured that you are going to interact with an Apache something uh, if you're using technology at all. But we've also had an enormous impact on the legal um, side of things. So the Apache license has been very widely adopted. It is one of the more frequently adopted permissive licenses. And it has stood the test of time. A lot of, a lot of licenses go through a lot of changes, and that's, that's happened very rarely for Apache. It's also um, kind of understated, but the, the standpoint that the Apache Software Foundation takes is often looked at and taken as the gold standard. So whether that's reaction to a new license um, or it's uh, determining whether a license can be easily used, a lot of people, even other open source organizations, when they first encounter a license, their initial reaction is, has the Apache Software Foundation said anything about this yet? Let's go look in their mailing list and see what the reaction there was. Uh, and so a lot of people have grown to come to trust our judgment around uh, open source licensing. But the foundation is a steward. And again, I talked about we have this uh, obligation to do things that are in the best interest of the public at large. And so we're steward for 190 million lines of code. And that's a number that boggles my mind. Um, one, of the, one of the really fascinating things that uh, Greg Stein did a few months back is he ran analysis on, on all of our code repositories. And as he's looking at you know, this 190 million lines of code, he's using a a uh, formula called Kokomo, which isn't perfect by any means, and he's measuring the replacement cost. If we had to start from scratch today and replace things like the Apache web server and Tomcat and Hadoop and all of the other Apache projects, the cost to do that would exceed $20 billion. That's a mind-boggling number when you consider that our um, annual budget uh, is just a little over a million dollars a year. It's also mind-boggling when you realize that's just the replacement cost, and that's not the cost of, uh, that's not the value of the software that we ship. Uh, the, the actual value that's delivered is much, much greater than that 20 billion number. And we provide all of that free to the public at no cost. Um, we've also inadvertently become a, uh, a large web presence. We have around 35 million page views per week, and uh, that's not part of our strategy. Our strategy is not to become a huge target for, for web traffic, but we have regardless. Uh, we have folks downloading 9 million copies of source code every week. Um, if you look at the monthly uh, download stats from some of the various distribution points like Maven Central or PyPy, uh, some of those numbers get crazy. We have people downloading 280 million copies of our software just from Maven Central every month. So very large, um, very large uptake of our software. And we started with 21 founders. Uh, and today there are over 7,000 committers. You'll notice that one of the things that uh, is interesting here is the number of committers who are added over at any point in time is fairly, roughly the same, right? We're, we're not having huge upswings, generally speaking. Generally, we're in that same range every month, which points to the fact that we're sustainably growing. Um, we're adding projects, we're adding folks who are working on those projects, but we're doing so in, um, in a manner that's, that is not uh, outstripping our capacity for growth. And there's lots of interesting anecdotes around just how much of the internet flows through uh, an Apache project, whether it's uh, the web server or Tomcat, um, whether it's on your phone. Um, and, of course, 
we've had this massive impact in terms of uh, the Apache software license being ubiquitously adopted as well. There are over 200 uh, top level projects that ship 350 software products. And every so often I get, I get some self-doubt that comes in and I say, you know, is the Apache Software Foundation still relevant? 20 years ago, it was, a, it was a big deal to have something like version control available and your own project website. Is the ASF still, um, still something that is relevant in today's society where you can go stand up a, a source code repository in 30 seconds? And invariably, someone will point out, you know, there are people who are coming to the Apache Incubator every month. There are currently roughly 50 projects that are asking to become top-level projects at the ASF and new ones joining every month, which is, uh, which is telling to me that means people continue to see value in what the ASF delivers, which is open governance and a neutral platform for folks to collaborate. So this is the eye chart. This is the top level projects. I think I'm actually missing uh, two, but uh, from the last board meeting, this is just to give you an idea of the huge wide scope of software that the ASF delivers. And that's everything from uh, the web server to, um, to things like Apache Mesos and Beam. Uh, there's uh, huge varieties here. And that's interesting to me because uh, we're not a Java organization, we're not a Python organization, we're not a JavaScript organization. Frankly, we're, we're just barely a software organization, really we're a collection of people. Uh, I mentioned the 50 some odd projects uh, that are in the incubator and here's a, here's a quick overview of those as well. These are folks who, are, who see value and want to bring their project to the ASF. And I said we're barely a software organization because as a number of the founders pointed out, we care more about the community than we do the code. While we certainly are circling around a body of code, uh, it is the people that matter and the people is what we want to have a focus on. And I think that's one of the things that makes the ASF truly unique. Uh, we don't care who you work for, where you come from, what your job title is. Uh, we care about whether you're contributing to our communities and moving that community forward. And notice I didn't say you're contributing code because a lot of people don't contribute code. Um, we care about uh, driving innovation and driving that uh, sense of community and working together towards uh, delivering software for the public good. Some of the ways that we do that are we focus on transparency. So it's hard to be a participant if you don't know what's going on, which is one of the reasons we focus on mailing lists. We have um, communications that go out and it's asynchronous. You don't have to be on a certain time zone or signed into a chat server at a specific time to know about decisions that are being made. You can see what's going on, be able to have your voice heard because we are, have the set expectation that there are going to be asynchronous decision making and it's going to happen on a mailing list where you can participate regardless of where you are in the world or what may be happening at, at a given hour. And we also have that focus on the people being more important than, um, than even the code that we're delivering as an end product. So I, I mentioned earlier we're at roughly 20 million emails. This is, slide is about a month old. Um, uh, but. 20 million emails across 1,100 mailing lists, and I'm sure that number is, is outdated now as well. So I talked about why we focus on things like community over code, uh, but the result of that 
is that we've ended up with a vendor neutral place. So even if you work for a software company who's a competitor with another software company, if there's some underlying tech that you both want to work on, you can come to the ASF and work on that. And it's okay. No one's going to look down upon you because of who your employer is. Frankly, we won't ask you who your employer is. Uh, that gives our projects a measure of independence. They don't have to worry about uh, undue influence, and we actually try and shield projects to ensure that they can be independent. The fact that we've been around for 20 years, that we have a known process where you enter the incubator, uh, you work towards um, graduation as a top-level project, and there's some known expectations there. That has uh, built up some trust. People know what to expect when they bring a project to the ASF, and they know what's going to come out at the end. Uh, they know the, the known IP policies that are going to be applied. They know what the license is going to be. They know that there shouldn't be any surprises, even in the dependencies for those projects. And that has led folks to find us as a safe place that they can trust and make use of. And so that has, and I, uh, I apologize to Bertrand if I'm taking his, his homeland's name here, that has made us a very neutral place, like Switzerland, for open source. Uh, we have created a developer safe haven where you can come and work on interesting technology without having to worry about all of the warring factions that may apply. And I, I mentioned earlier that I have those moments of self-doubt where I, where I question, is Apache still relevant? Uh, do we still provide value to the rest of the open source world and the tech world in general? And then I look at graphs like this that show that we're continuing to draw new contributors every single month. Uh, we're still seeing act people actively working on um, projects at the ASF, delivering code, delivering documentation, and that number is, is growing at uh, an unprecedented rate. Uh, we're, we're not even uh, growing linearly at this point, it's, uh, it's exceeding that. So what does the foundation itself do? And I call, uh, I say that the foundation is a little separate from the projects because projects are allowed to make their own technical decisions. There is no one who holds the title of chief strategist at the Apache Software Foundation. No one says, we're going to go out and we're going to target big data. We're going to target JavaScript. Uh, those types of decisions aren't made. So there's no CTO at the Apache Software Foundation where we have this vision of what's going to happen in the future from a tech sense. Uh, rather, the foundation exists as a support structure and scaffolding to allow projects to deliver their software. Uh, so that's things like we providing project websites, bug trackers. Uh, we have the legal affairs folks who perform things like license reviews and ensure that our downstream consumers are not surprised by uh, license requirements. We have a public relations uh, committee that focuses on uh, getting the word out about some of these projects and making sure that they're um, that the world knows that they exist. Uh, but I want to talk about two different parts of the foundation that I think are exceedingly important because I'm happy to talk about infrastructure all the time, having uh, spent a lot of time working on infrastructure. Uh, but when I think about the purpose of the Apache Software Foundation and how we drive that purpose further, I look at things like um, the community development team and the conferences folks, and including the folks who are putting on this conference. Uh, this is one of the few times of the year that Apache contributors can come together and interact with each other. And you heard the founders talk about uh, the meeting in San Francisco 
and how important that was to, uh, to build those community links face to face. And I think that is doubly important now, especially as we have 7,000 committers. Having those personal relationships is more important than ever because that's the thing that sets us apart. If I had to tell you one thing that the uh, ASF does that is truly unique, it's that we focus on the individual. And we focus on empowering the individual to go and deliver code if they want, write documentation, evangelize their own project, and we basically are trying to get out of their way and, and uh, allow them to do interesting things. But that is largely dependent upon them being part of the community. And in-person events like this are incredibly important to building up those, uh, those relationships. I personally remember uh, one of the first Apache cons I went to, and um, you can blame Rich for me being up here, because he basically said, well, you know, we ought to get you involved in something at the ASF. And soon enough, he had volunteered me for um, working in infrastructure. And I started working there and became more and more involved at the Apache Software Foundation. And that started from a conversation sitting on a couch with someone I knew only by reputation before that. Uh, so that opened up a number of opportunities for me. Uh, I'm, uh, I'm sure that uh, Rich is listening to this now and probably regretting the fact that he got me involved. Uh, but, uh, you know, this is, the, this is the type of opportunity that you have to build relationships with people. You saw the number of people here who are here for their first time at their first Apache Con, and the number of people here who are not committers yet. Um, this is their opportunity to get to know folks, uh, and please take advantage of that. Uh, I think that, frankly, our spending money on ApacheCon is probably one of the best investments that we can make because it's one of the few things we can do to uh, bring people together and build those human relationships up. The other is the security uh, committee, and Mark Cox was talking about that earlier during the Founders Panel and that he's working on that. Uh, the ASF remember, has a legal obligation to act in the public's best interest. We have to uh, do what's in the public's best interest and the public good. And so the, um, the focus from, uh, from the security team is that they're, they're ensuring that all of these projects, the 200 plus top level projects, are actually meeting their obligations from a security perspective. Because it's one thing to release software, it's another thing to be responsible for it long term. And to be responsible for your user security. And so essentially Mark runs one of the most important um, product security organizations, the Security Committee. And that reflects back on what we perceive as our obligation to the public. Right? We want to ensure that our projects are timely responding uh, to security issues. We want to ensure that uh, consumers of our products are actually getting notices. And again, we go back to this focus on uh, the public good, and that probably seems to most people, I'm sure it doesn't to to the security committee, but that probably seems to most people to be boring, especially when it's not your code and you're having to largely babysit the process for 200 some odd projects. Um, but again, we have that focus on, we have to take care of the people who are actually consuming our software, the people we've released that to, and it's a vital part of the operational function of, of the ASF. I'm always asked, of course, is the ASF going to be around? And again, I'm, I tend to be a pessimist, 
and I always question, you know, are we going to survive another 20 years? And I'm happy to report that the ASF is doing well from a financial perspective. Uh, we've been for a number of years now, once we realized that you know, we're not just a group of friends who are getting together, we've actually had a budget in place. We're tracking against that budget. Uh, we're consistently under our planned budget as well, uh, which, is, uh, which is remarkable given some of the unknown things that happen. Uh, beginning a few years ago, we started having the board set out a five-year vision. And again, that's not the Apache Software Foundation is going to become the home for Java or we're going to go attract a, lot, a bunch of big data projects. Uh, the, the reality is, is that um, from an operational perspective, we need to understand what, what we're trying to do um, and what we need to be directing our energy towards, whether that's holding more in-person events or um, offering more technology to our projects. And so the board has actually been producing a five-year plan uh, for the past couple of years, so looking forward five years. We also, uh, because we're starting to, what is in our mind, handle a little bit more money, we've started having an audit, and we received an unqualified audit uh, result from uh, our CPAs, and that means that they have no reservations about our processes or what's actually in our reports. And we're also incredibly transparent. So if you want to see what's going on with the Apache Software Foundation's finances, you can find that in the board report every month. You can see our budget once it's approved. And of course, we also, um, by law, have to make our tax returns available. You can go take a look at all of that uh, on our website today. Uh, we also have more than nine months of operating cash reserve. And that number doesn't necessarily mean a lot to folks, but the average for a nonprofit based in the U.S. is about six months. Uh, so we're, we're doing substantially better than uh, a number of nonprofits that are at our size. And speaking of finances, we could not do this without our sponsors. Um, I would encourage you, if you interact with any of our sponsors, and I wish I could say that this is all on one slide, but unfortunately, or maybe fortunately, we have, we have so many folks that are invested in our success that I can't fit them on one slide. Um, and I've even had to, to go down to text for some of them. Uh, if you interact with any of these folks, please thank them for supporting the ASF. And make sure that you also thank the folks who are sponsoring ApacheCon EU. As I said earlier, I think that getting together in person is incredibly important. So what's next? What's coming at the Apache Software Foundation? Uh, there's lots of things happening on the tech angle. There's new projects coming uh, every, uh, every month. As a matter of fact, I actually participated in submitting a proposal for a new project. Uh, as I was in the Amsterdam airport coming here. Uh, so there's always going to be new projects showing up. There's always going to be interesting things coming out of projects. But if you want to have a look at our uh, five-year strategic plan, you can see the URL there to get to the board's five-year plan. Uh, and if you want to look at our financial standing, you can see there uh, a, uh, a URL that points to a number of reports that includes our uh, U.S. tax returns, uh, as well as a number of other records. Uh, but one of the things that we're focusing on is, as we grow and as we try and um, prepare ourselves for the next 20 years is making sure that we're a welcome place for people to come innovate. Uh, it does no good for us to have projects if we're all mean and grumpy and, and run everyone off. So this year the board uh, launched a diversity and inclusion initiative. And uh, a lot of that work is around understanding where some of the friction is, understanding the current status of uh, what people think about uh, participating at the ASF. And that work is underway and I'm, I'm actually excited to see what comes out of that, what we can learn about 
folks and how they participate and how we can better enable that. That said, uh, today we're at ApacheCon and I hope that you will take advantage of the fact that we're all located here. This is the place where you will make relationships and friendships that will last you uh, many, many years. You'll end up with opportunities to work on cool tech uh, that maybe you never heard of before you showed up at ApacheCon. Um, but most importantly, you're gonna make friends here. And I hope you take advantage of that. I think it's an incredible opportunity. And to Merle and Rich and the folks that you've assembled to produce ApacheCon, thank you. I appreciate the opportunity that I get to come here and continue building relationships.